Hey, GovCon Giants family, welcome to another episode of Making a Giant podcast. Today's episode, we feature Demetrius Walker of Fido Logistics. Before we get started into Demetrius, I just want to let everyone know that this is the last month, the month of October, where we're offering our 2.0 bundle program. So if you're interested, visit govconeric.com slash join for more information on our bundle programs. This is the last month before they go up significantly in price. But today we're bringing you this episode with Demetrius Walker and Maria Martinez, where we interview him on his journey from becoming a Marine. He worked at various jobs before deciding upon becoming a government contractor and founding his firm, Fido Logistics. So stay tuned for this upcoming exciting episode. All you truckers and transportation people should be watching this intensely with Demetrius Walker and Maria Martinez on Making a Giant. Thank you so much. Today, we're actually picking up Making a Giant podcast from where we last left off. And today, we have the pleasure of having Demetrius with us. This is Demetrius Walker. He's actually CEO of Fido Logistics out of Alabama. And he's actually been with us, I just found out, since the same time I started. So we've been around about the same time, time, the end of 2017. So you've are kind of new, but not so much. But it's really interesting to know like how much you've accomplished in the last three to four years, but more so the last year. I think this last year has been like your biggest growth. So we want to know like your, not your secrets, but what made you get into that? It's time, let's do it. And because you've been very successful. So it's very important for people to know like what drove your success and what has come from it and where you're going from it now. So Demetrius, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So I gave people a little bit of a story of where you're from, but just give us about who is Demetrius, where did he grow up and where he is now? Um, So I grew up in a, a small a uh, little rural area in Alabama. The city is called Utah, uh, but we grew up in a small little town called Snotty. Um, it's like very country. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as a kid, you know, we had, you know, pigs and my grandmother and grandfather, you know, they they did farming and had gardens and, and stuff like that, so. Oh, wow. Um, like you yeah, are in real Alabama then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real small town, country kid, uh, about as far away from government contracting as you can get. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I, I, That's pretty cool. Honestly, I've always wanted a farm. So for me, it's exciting that you grew up in like with pigs and the farm and the garden and things like that. So mm-hmm. you sm- grew up in this small town. Um, you went to all through school in the small town? Uh, yeah, so with the... Um, Went to elementary school um, right up the road um, in a little city called Union, Alabama. Did uh, high school in the city of Utah, where we later combined the high school from Utah High School to uh, Green County High School, uh, combined two, uh, both the high schools in the county uh, to make one big one. So, <laughs> well, not one big one, but, uh, <laughs> you know, that, for yeah, one high school. Yeah, that's, uh, and then what did you do after high school? Uh, so after high school, me and my best friend, uh, we went immediately into the Marine Corps. Uh, we joined the delayed entry program our mm-hmm. junior year of high school, I want to say. And then probably a month after we graduated, we was off to Paris Island. Oh, wow. did you always want to join the military or was it something that last minute you were like, that seems pretty cool? We We kind of thought about it you know we got together we was in ROTC oh okay um, you know so we was so it always you always had that interest of the military right you know because it was it was the benefits um mm. you know we were looking at the the GI Bill and the possibility of going to you know attending classes while you're on active duty uh so you know those were some of the benefits and then if we got lucky enough to do some traveling. That would have been the, the ice cream on the, on top of the cake. But yeah, you know, we were we were trying to just map out, you know, what direction we wanted to go in, in life. And, uh, you know, the military just seemed like the best way to go at the time. And, you know, we originally we were thinking about going Army, uh, but the Marine Corps recruiter was a bit better salesman. 
And so, you know, we went that's, to the Marines. That's a good way to see see it. Like they are actually just salesmen. They're selling that they are better than the other branches. Right. So, they, you know, they're all the, you know, oh. they all have the same benefits, you know. Yeah, it's all same. the same. Yeah, that's yeah. true. So, you know, one just was a, a better salesman and, <laughs> you know, he came along and said, you know, you come over here, you know, you get a better uniform. <laughs> um, the ladies like the Marines uniforms better than anybody oh, else. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. if you think of it, the way people think about the Marines, they're the toughest, like, right. people out there. Like, to be a Marine, you have to be tough. Go through Paris Island. Go through your boot camp is completely different than right. the Air Force six weeks boot camp or the Army's right. eight-week boot camp. So, Marines, I've heard, it's the toughest one. So, you yeah, made yeah. it all through Paris Island. What? Well, you guys don't really choose an MOS in the Marines. Like I hear everyone's just infantry. Were you just infantry? Uh, well, you 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 do basic infantry training. So every Marine is a basic infantry man. Um, you all get this basic infantry training skills of how to be a marksman, how mm -hmm. to survive in the field, uh, things like that. Uh, but I went in uh, crazy enough. I went in. I told him I wanted to to be an accountant when I, you know, cause you know, the, the recruiter asks, uh -huh. uh, what type of job would you like to do outside of the military? Yeah. If you know, you, you didn't choose to make it a career. And at the time, uh, accounting was kind of like a, a good career field. So I asked him, I said, yeah, well, I like to go into like the accounting. And I ended up <laughs> working in a warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are accounting. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't like a, De you know, a, a designated, <laughs> you know, there was like, well, so the, the accounting field, you know, yeah. me and uh, supply and logistics and I ended up working in a warehouse oh, uh, okay. for a couple of years. Is that your first like, like way of learning the logistics fields of how things work and operate? Uh, pretty much. Yes. Because before that, you know, we had typical, you know, teenage jobs, uh, you know, we would wash cars to make extra money or uh -huh. worked at fast food, you know, stuff like that, um, cut grass, you know, whatever little handyman that's, job we could do. That's to, the old school mentality money. of kids. Kids these days don't do anything to make no. extra money. So so it's changed a little bit. Um, and how long were you in the Marines for? Uh, I did a little over four years. Okay. Okay. Um, and then when you got out, how was your transition? Did you go right back to Alabama? Uh, pretty much, yes. You know, because I, I was stationed out in Hawaii. Oh, and, yeah. So you got you did got the, to travel to nice places. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We had you know bump, bounced around to a couple of good uh, areas out in in the Pacific area. But you know, when I got out, came back to Alabama, and um, you know, because being out there in Hawaii, the cost of living is like insane so yeah yeah if you didn't have one of those uh high paying gs jobs or something like that you know it's kind of hard to survive out there you know as a civilian um so i just you know came back here and you know tried to test the waters uh you know trying to get a state job or a government job uh back this way which uh didn't pan out like i thought you know everybody you know, back then they gave me some uh, uh, misinformed advice. You know, they're like, you, you get out, you can, you know, you can, you're a shoe in for a job at the post office or mm -hmm. any type of state or federal job in Alabama. And, you know, <laughs> everyone, you know, was denial letters. Oh. Uh, and so I ended up working in some uh, manufacturing plants, some of the uh, suppliers for the uh, Mercedes Benz plant uh in Vance, Alabama. What were you doing in the plant? I uh, worked on the assembly line. You know, we were making the uh the door panel systems that go inside the um car doors, you know, with the the speakers and the wiring harnesses and the uh the rails that the window oh, okay. glass sits in. So we were making those assemblies and um I did that for uh, I want to say probably almost about three years. Okay. So you went from wanting to be an accountant, going to the military, and then in the military, you got the logistics and supplies kind of 
thing. Coming out, all you wanted was a government or state job, some job, because and it, it makes sense because we think those are stable. We think mm -hmm. those are comfortable. We think of, like you said, same thing, the benefits that we're going to get from them. And now yeah. you come back, everyone sells you on, it's going to be easy. You end oh. up working at a manufacturer assembly line. I'm sure at that point in life, you're like, what's going on? Yeah. So yeah. What was yeah. the, the train of thought of what is next for you? What, what are we going to accomplish next? So at that time, you know, kind of had a, a, a few different things going on. You know, I was, you know, trying my hand at going back to, um, you know, school, doing online learning. Um, and you What know, were you going to, to school for? Just basic business management. Okay. So you've always yeah. had this business mindset. Yeah. You know, and, I, and I, I wanted to find something that, you know, you're going to invest a lot of money into a college degree, um, something that would have better chances of me you know, being able to utilize it to get a job, you know, versus some of the other degrees that, you know, you see people get and then they end up working in a job industry or something that's just total opposite of what that was for, you know. So my degree is a criminology degree. That right. is, that's why they say it's a, it's, I got a BS, but it's really a BS degree because right. what am I going to really do? So yeah, my degree is, it wasn't useless because I used it for a little bit, but mm -hmm. it's just, like you said, it's one of those, uh, we get a lot of them got degrees that we don't even think of, of it being utilized in whatever industry we think we're going to go to. Exactly. So, you know, I wanted to, you know, and, and it, there's a bunch of different, you know, manufacturing type plants around here. So I was thinking, you know, okay, you know, trying to get into the business management mm -hmm. um, degree program uh, and graduating with that type of uh, degree would increase my chances of trying to get, you know, some type of intra-level uh, management job. So that's, I did that and uh, wasn't too successful the first go around uh, trying to balance, you know, that work and, you know, family life and, um, you know, working at those manufacturing plants, we was on a rotating shift. So we would do two weeks of days and two weeks nights and oh. then it'd rotate back and forth like that. And, you know, trying to juggle, you know, the school load, you know, it didn't fare too well that first uh, go around. <laughs> <laughs> so you said the first go around. So they had to be a second go around. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So and uh, after I uh, left that job, I uh, moved up there to uh, Maryland for a, a while. My daughter, uh, mom, she had joined the Air Force and oh, okay. she had got stationed at the NSA up there at uh, Fort Meade up there. So we moved up there for a little while. And then I had a friend that was doing, starting his music career <laughs> down in Atlanta. So, you know, I ended up, we ended up going down there to try to help him out with that. But yeah, the, 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 the timing of it just wasn't right. You know, we had some good connections in the music industry, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, the, the job situation, it was like 2009 and you know, you had the, the recession going yes. on and it was jobs was pretty scarce everywhere. The jobs that were hiring were little uh, temp jobs. I remember uh, one of the temp jobs I did out there, they sent me on like a, an assignment for, three hours and all I did was sweep the parking lot in this warehouse. That was it. <laughs> and that, that was, I went out there and then it was like, all right, we'll call you when we got something else. <laughs> oh, wow. And I never got a call back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess you didn't do a good job sweeping. <laughs> well, they told me I did a good job, but they're like, if we can hire, we will hire you, but. Oh. Like, so you went from Alabama to Maryland. You were not in Maryland for that long then. Um, we was, I was up there for uh, probably about eight months, I want to okay. say. And Seven then, or eight months. And then Atlanta. You're going to the, these big, big cities. You went from yeah. small town Alabama to these big old cities. Yeah, yeah. It's been, it's been fun. And then right back. <laughs> <laughs> and then after Atlanta what did you do after everything was going on? Um, so over there, you know, I was, like I said, we were 
trying to hand in the music industry. Um, I was DJing. I had a couple of little uh, gigs at some little restaurant, you know, bar, bar and grills. Uh-huh. Um, wasn't making a whole lot of money, you know, especially considering I was going to college over there as well. I was at the uh, Art Institute of Atlanta for sound engineering because I was, you know, wanted to get in sound engineering for radios and TV uh-huh. commercials and things like that. I wanted to get into that field. Um, but you know, the, 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 the living situation with the job and the high tuition, um, eventually it just came to a head and I said, you know what, man, I'm, a, I'm just coming back to Alabama, uh, get myself back together. And, you know, I ended up re-enrolling back at the university of Alabama, got back in around 20, 2010. And, um, you know, I started DJing out there, you know, to help you know, support myself, yeah. got some, got some really good gigs, uh, making a pretty, you know, comfortable, you know, living, doing that and going to school and, uh, eventually finished up my degree. Uh-huh. What did you finally get it in business management? Uh, yeah, double majored in, uh, business management and marketing. Okay. So now you have the nice piece of paper that people tell you, you have to get to get a cushy job. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> that's what they say. That's that's exactly that's what they say. So now they have this degree, double degree. Like, what do you? What are your plans next? Um. So once I got that, um, I was working back at another supplier for the Mercedes uh, Benz uh, plants up there, and they they were a logistics company. I was working there for a few months and then I applied for a team leader training program at a textile manufacturing plant Mm -hmm. and uh, you know just just sitting around uh, poking around on Indeed I applied for it and uh, probably like the next day um, the human resources lady called me Uh, we set up a couple of phone interviews Eventually did a couple of in-person interviews and uh, got accepted into the team leader pro- training program, which was an uh, entry-level management position in that company. Okay. And so this will take us to about what year now? Uh, that was 2014. Okay. So you did that. You have, you were like, I'm in business management. I'm going to get where I need to go. What has changed from that perspective of that you wanted that job and how did you even find government contracting? All right. So, um, I got accepted into the team leader training program and, um, eventually I was awarded a full-time team leader position around 2015 uh, like the early part of 2015, I was awarded a full time train, a uh, full time team leader position. Did you feel successful then that you actually did something great? Um, it, it was a little bit of a sigh relief. Okay, yeah. But then you know, once you, you know, you transition from you know one part of it, now you have to, you know, learn the other side of it because uh, you're not in training no more. You you know you're expected to lead at this point. And so I did that. I was a team leader for about two years before uh, getting promoted to a shift supervisor. Oh, look at you. Right. And, and then uh, once I got that, you know, there's some things happened where, you know, people had to miss work and stuff. So when they would miss, you know, I was like, hey, man, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go get this money, you know, because it's been a, it's been a rough few, you know, few years and I got a lot of stuff I need to clear up. I got to get my credit straight (laughs) and get these student loan people off my face. (laughs) So, you know, whenever they needed somebody to come in and fill in, you know, I was just hustling, you know, Hey, I'll cover the shift, you know, however, four hours, two hours, the whole shift, whatever, you know, I come in and cover what I could. And I did that for the, bulk of the year for uh, 2017 and then towards the latter end of the year I just had a realization like how can I keep can you can you can you really you know sustain this type of 
uh, working, you know, you know, you're I was going to say, I'm like, you was, must have been like physically just overwhelmed, like just over exhausted of working because you're doing your job, then you're covering their shifts. So it's like, when do you stop? It gets to a point. And, I, and I've seen it now that I've gone back to like the normal job field. Like mm -hmm. these people will work you. If you yeah. are willing to work, they will allow it. Exactly. And then you just go, go, go. And then one day it's just, just like, like you said, one day you come to a realization, like, what am I doing? Like this, right. this is, can't be what I'm supposed to be doing. Like I am physically tired. Like I can't exactly. give no more. So it comes to that breaking point for us to open our eyes and think of other solutions. Right. And, you know, I was just, you know, I was just sitting around. I th it was around the, the holiday break, you know. I think we were around Thanksgiving, shut down. Uh, some Sometime when we had some time where I could just sit around and mm -hmm. say, hey, you know, man, is this, you know, can you, how long can you sustain working like this, you know, before your body starts breaking down? And, you know, I was like, man, you got a college degree, man, you know, you can maybe use that to make some money on the side, you know, so then I started trying to think of, okay, what can I do part-time to offset this money that I'm making on overtime, working all these hours, and I was like, well, maybe I could, you know, consult some other businesses, and, you know, try to, you know, because when I was DJing, you know, you got to come up with ways to market yourself and mm -hmm. set yourself apart from other competition out there so like maybe I can you know do some marketing and consulting work for some other small businesses try to help them out and you know that'll be a way to offset you know some of these hours that I'm spending up here and working in this plant so then that that, that came another question it was okay well who are you going to market to and then you know I toiled over toiled over uh -huh. then I, Eventually, I said, well, the government, the government, you know, being prior military, I had experience as a purchaser. Oh, and, okay. You know, when, you know, being out in Hawaii, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of hard to get stuff out there. And so sometimes we would run out of stuff and we will, they will, you know, authorize us to go out in town and buy something from a local company that was on the authorized list mm -hmm. um, but you know you could go out there and you can buy some little parts and you know whatever stuff you need until stuff comes in through the, the normal uh system uh, that you've ordered and so i said you know what man you know the government buys stuff from from uh small businesses and stuff like that then maybe i can do some consulting work and try oh. to marry the two and that's when I got on YouTube and started consulting, consulting with the government, this, that, and the third. And, you know, stumbled across some of Eric's videos and, you know, just went down that rabbit hole. And Everyone <laughs> says that. Everyone's like, it just started with me finding a video and then it just like goes down a rabbit hole. Yes, yes. And this was, you know, this was around the, the tail end of 2017. And... There were some other people videos out there, uh -huh. but the, the information just wasn't, it, it just like, it, it was so vague what they were telling you, mm -hmm. you know, and it was, you know, like every one of their, inf their videos was the same. Well, we'll show you, you're like, they were trying to sell me something. They weren't, you know, giving, you the giving, information. giving me any information to kind of get me moving forward, you know? And so when I came across Eric's videos, his was you know, eight and 15 minutes long. And, you know, it's like, okay, well, you know, maybe, maybe there's something to this government contracting. Then uh, eventually I set up the free call with Eric. And mm -hmm. I think that was, the, was like a free 15 or 20 minute call or something like that. Set that up and join the, the course after that and try to try to start, you know, figuring out how to navigate doing work with the government on this side because you know I had experience doing it on the other side but now it was time to learn how to figure out how to do it on this side where you you know selling products to the government did you know what products you wanted to sell or did it even matter not at first um <laughs> I, eric I, I, I hindsight is 2020 
you know, when I told them I did, you know, aviation logistics in the Marines, they were like, yeah, the government buys logistics services, do that. And I was like, okay. And then I got, got home, I started fooling around on FBO back before Sam.gov. Yes, took know, over. <laughs> you know, Ted Biz Ops. And I got to, you know, searching around and looking for opportunities. And uh-huh. I got caught up in those, that shiny light. You know, you're seeing these big construction contracts with the potential for $200 million and $500 million. You're like, man, if I could get a consulting client and get 10 or 20% of that contract, you know, I'll be set for life, you know. So, so you went from trying to sell the government just simple products into going down the FBO rabbit hole now and seeing these bigger contracts and you're just like, forget the $500 credit card purchase. Like, I want the big one. Yeah, you know, because, <laughs> you know, you, you see in those numbers, you know, and I don't think, I think that's one of the plus sides of Sam.gov. They just show the opportunity. They don't show the potential award amount. So anybody who's coming into it now, you know, they won't get so fixated on, you know, cause I don't have any experience in the construction industry, but I was like, you know, Eric said I could be a, be a consultant and there's some construction companies up the road <laughs> and I, they might not be doing, you know, so, you know, and I, I had a couple of, you know, sit downs with some of them. So the wheels are turning. Yeah, the wheels got the turning. And I had a few sit downs with a few of the the owners of some of these construction companies. Oh, so you went out for them. Yeah, I went. I went and talked to some of them. I would go to um, a lot of the pre-bids locally here. Uh, But those companies, they were making so much money doing these local jobs. (laughs) They're like, you know what? We did some federal work. Uh, the, 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 The purchase life cycle takes so long and like you know we just come and do this stuff this type of work with the city and the state and they had carved out their <laughs> their share of the yeah. market and you know then yeah, it was some back people, to one. yeah some people once they have it going with a certain like even if it's commercial or private or whatever like there's right. like like the whole thing like if it ain't fit if it ain't broken why fix it kind of thing like for right. them it's working but what gave you the confidence, I guess? And I ask this because a lot of people ask, like, how, what, what am I supposed to say? Like, what, what, how do I call these people? How do I just go out and talk to them? And that was me also. Um, I was very like, oh, I don't want to pick up the phone kind of person. And you just, Eric said, why don't you look at this? You saw there's opportunities in construction. You're like, hey, there's some companies. Let me just talk to them. Like, how did you approach them without with the confidence you had just you know at those at the pre-bid meetings they're sort of informal and Mm -hmm. relaxed so you know you're like walking around hey how you doing you know you shake your hand it was just you know a soft introduction and like what do you do oh you know well i'm I'm i have a consultant company and gave him my my consultant sales pitch Um, (laughs) you know I'm, i'm working on you know i work with small businesses trying to get them work with the federal government and they're like oh okay well you know how to get work with the federal government so yeah I'm, you know i can do some market research for you and show you some opportunities and you know we went over the whole process mm-hmm. and you know we had a few sit downs and meetings and you know after a while <laughs> the, the text and calls start going unanswered and then it's like okay it's time to find somebody else you know but yes uh, that was that was that was my general approach just you know and that's still type sort of my my approach now whenever they do have in-person events uh just try to get in the room with people and get in the room you know either somebody's going to come up to you or you know you're eventually going to be by somebody long enough where you're just feeling awkward and you got to say (laughs) something to them (laughs) <laughs> to say something just yeah you know you just got to say something you just you sit beside this person and you know somebody normally somebody else would break the ice i'm, I'm a bit of an introvert but a lot of times hold on yeah. how are you an introvert when you did marketing and you dj like aren't you used yeah. to talking and the fact that you just thought had the idea and you went out and talked to people like 
Well, you know, there, it was it was something in it, it was something <laughs> in it for me. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. If you DJ, you get paid, right. and if you talk to this person, I might get a deal. So there has to be a reward yeah. system or a reason or purpose yeah. for it in order it for you to do a purpose. You know, but not, you're not the small talk kind of person. Like no. I'm gonna sit next to you in a plane. You're gonna have a conversation with me. No, no, <laughs> not 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 likely. <laughs> <laughs> There's sometimes it happens that way, you know, I sit next to somebody on a plane and a conversation, you know, you, you know, because typically, you know, you sit back, you know, you might say, excuse me, this your buckle, that's not your <laughs> buckle, you know. And that's the end of the conversation. Yeah. And then every now and then, you know, you get somebody that mm. is a little bit more conversational and mm-hmm. it turns into some. Uh, I would, yeah, I just never thought you was the introvert kind, just because like you you went out for it. You talked to these people. You called the companies. You made that talk. But like you said, if there's something, if the possibility of something is there, like oh, that's your motivation to even right. speak to them. So that's a really good one. Right. Because, you know, I mean, you don't know if you don't try. But, you you know, I think, uh, who is that? Kobe Bryant or Michael Jordan, one of those guys said, if you, you, you have a 50-50 chance of making a shot if you take it but if you don't take it you got a 100 percent chance of not, uh, <laughs> not making it so let me go ahead and, and try it and, and let's see where it goes the worst case scenario you know i made an introduction to this person and somebody else um comes along and you know they might be looking for some type of connection or inside line with them i could say hey well mm-hmm. I met that person over there. Um, tell him you got the your, your contact information from me. I talked to him about a month or so ago, and you know, see where it goes. Hey, did did you land any of those construction companies? Uh no. <laughs> uh, so I had to go back to the. I went back to the drawing board. <laughs> okay, uh, okay. You know, and how long was, did you do that? Try that for? I tried that for the bulk of two thousand and. 18. Okay, so um, you were persistent, which is a good thing. Yeah. It's not like you tried it for a month or the first one and then you're like, oh, it's not working. I can't do it. No. Uh, so uh, you I gave was, it a shot. I was I was I was working at it, you know. <laughs> and um I think probably probably around the latter end of 2018. I started getting approached by, you know, guys who own trucking companies and stuff like that, you know, that were looking to try to get government work, you know, they because like, you know, we we pick up loads from bases and things like this. And, you know, those loads pay better than the typical loads you get on the commercial side. And I was like, well, yeah, you're right, man. They're like, so, you know, if you get, I, I'm, willing, I'm willing to be one of your clients if you can help me get how did they know you were looking at government contracting? Because, uh, you know, I was talking on Facebook, you know. Oh, okay. Oh, you know, advertising. You're doing your own marketing. marketing. You're putting it out there. Yeah. That so was the drawing board thing? When you went back to the drawing board, was your thought process of, okay, it's time to market myself and just see what comes to me now? Yeah. You know, that was more, more so along the lines, you know, see, you know, because I knew some people who had, you know, little side businesses doing stuff so I was like well if I can't get the big guys maybe I can get the smaller guys okay. and connect them with the big guys and maybe there's some type of middleman fee I can get out of that of, of connecting the two and so I started marketing myself and, and letting them know you know doing some consulting work and uh, broadcasting on my Facebook and my LinkedIn and even in face-to-face conversations mm-hmm. Still, I was still working at the plant at that time. Oh, okay. And so, yeah, I was trying to juggle both. <laughs> wow. And so I was doing that and started getting approached by people that, you know, own the trucking companies. And I said, well, you know, uh, maybe there is something, you know, let me see what's out there for the transportation. And so, you know, I started doing the market research and started seeing how much the federal spend was on transportation services and things like that. And so, okay, okay, maybe this is where I need to go. You know, maybe this is the the the, the, the path that's that, that yeah. for me. And 
you know, doing that, you know, I was getting approached by multiple, you know, transportation companies and most of them were small owner operators. I got tired of trying to do the same amount of work for each individual company. I said, you know what, I just need to, you know, start my own logistics company um, and see how I can sub out the work, <laughs> you know, whenever I come across it, you know, because, you know, you, when you got a consultant client, you know, you have to market each individual company, you know, and here it is, you know, I got, you know, six, seven trucking companies This, you know, say, hey, yeah. Oh, uh, you know, we want to do oh. federal work. And it's all, but you know, they all like got one or three trucks or. So why not combine trucks. them? And then you are the main person that gives. Right. Ah, that, that's a very good idea. And so that's what I started toying with that idea. And I uh -huh. went and got my uh, freight broker authority and applied for my DOT number and got all my you know, all my requirements to, to operate as a federal, as, as a freight broker. And I started going down that path. And that was the beginning around February of 2019. Uh, you know, I start, had to establish a new company first off. <laughs> so I had to, you know, establish a new company and started working on uh, learning how to do the freight brokering and things like that. You know, because this was all new to you too. Yes, that's told you know, I got friends that own trucking companies, but you know, they know the trucking side of it. They don't the <laughs> brokering, people, yeah. They don't know the brokering side of it. So, you know, I started going to training and, and, and enrolled in a, a, a training program and and all this of, is you're still working, by the way. Yeah, I'm still working. Still working, <sighs> still working at night from uh 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Oof. And I was a supervisor, so typically I had to get there around 6.15 to 6.30. And I'd get off around 7.30, 7.45 in the morning. In the morning. Yeah. Because wow. Yeah, that's, so, that's dedication. And, and so, <laughs> that, that, yeah, that was, that was, I spent, you know, my off days learning, you know, mm -hmm. gov government contracting and Learning, and freight brokering. And freight brokering. <laughs> Learning the requirements and finding the, the companies to give me the insurance and the bonding and all of that stuff. Wow. That's having a lot of grit and a lot of perseverance to having to work not just a job, but the fact that it's overnight and mm -hmm. then getting home at everyone's doing life so at that time you want to stay up but then you're using your days off to learn and things like that so what did you do with the logistics company now that you you're learning it you've got your dot you got the insurance you got everything and you know where the you did your little bit of research because that's how you knew there was an opportunity was there how does that go um so you know you start marketing the capabilities you know to to the different agencies that you know, you, you know, buying transportation services and, you know, some of them, you know, you get the typical answers, uh, send us your capability statement and, you know, things like that. And then other ones, you have to meet certain criteria to, to, uh, to be able to do business with them. Um, so with, with those, I'm still waiting to meet those because I have a, it's a three-year requirement to be oh. able to do work with the SDDC as a freight broker. I think is if you're owner operator, um, you can start working with them immediately. Mm -hmm. But as a freight broker, you know you got to have all this additional insurances, and you got to have been business, you know, for three continuous years, and your your bond had couldn't have any lapses in it. It's like yeah, it's a whole lot of it's a whole lot of uh, red tape and boxes you got to you know check, and so. Yeah, I started marketing, you know, my logistics services uh, to agencies and, you know, typically, you know, you get met with uh, some of the answers would be, well, we have our own in-house uh, transportation mm -hmm. offices or, you know, we don't really have a need for that. <laughs> you know, it, it was, you know, so you, you kind of got hit with, uh, you know, I started thinking, well, man, 
you know, did I make the right choice? But then I ended up coming in contact with some guys that um, had been doing freight brokering for a long time. And they didn't have any experience doing government work. And they was, you know, they were at a, at a training uh, seminar up in Birmingham that was with another guy that I met at a previous training <laughs> exercise uh-huh. there. And, you know, he, the guy that I had met, he said, well, if you all need somebody that's, you know, they, cause these guys said they needed a service disabled vet to team up with to get this subcontracting deal with this medical supply company. And then, you know, my guy, uh, Greg, he's like, hey, <laughs> I know somebody <laughs> that I met, you know, up here about a month or so ago. And he reached out to me, like, is it okay if I pass you there? You give you, give them your contact. So you're not you. even there. No, I wasn't even there. But, you know, okay. me, me and him had, you know, we had yeah. talked. We had, you know, had some conversations about, you know, what he does. And he did, he does janitorial supplies and things like that, that he was trying to market to. Uh, to the government and he was like man if I ever come across anybody you know I'll give them your information I said okay thanks you know and I kind of left it at that and you know about a (laughs) month or so goes by and he calls me up and I'm like hey what's going on he's hey man I got these guys they looking for somebody to team up with for this uh contract the, the the transport medical supply and I was like all right, man, I'm, I'm gay, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, and, you know, we, we, we had a few meetings. Uh, I met the main guy, uh, talked to him a couple of times and then met his other two business partners. It was, you know, three of them, you know, they do a consulting company managing uh, transportation setups for, for businesses and, you know, that was uh, pretty much how I got my first subcontract. Oh, so you it worked out? Yes, we, we started doing that one probably around February 2020 is when we started doing performing on that subcontract. Wow. How and, much was it? Um, it, it? It fluctuates because we doing um, we transport the medical supplies. So it's based off of how much the medical supply company is shipping because they won their contract with the VA. But far as, from what I can tell by looking at the statements, it was like a BPA that they won. Yeah, and because so, they're issuing you your task order. So that's why you say it's fluctuating. Yeah. And so, you know, we're, we're charging them, you know, it's not full of truckloads that we're moving. It's less than truckloads. So it's, you know, it might be a few pallets, you know, so it, it kind of, you know, fluctuates, uh, but it was a way to get past performance. Yes, I was going to say that. That. One, that, was, that was my biggest talk. That was my biggest uh, reason for wanting to jump on it. Uh, it's like, hey, I need to pass performance. So that way, when I'm in a room with, you know, these small business liaisons and these uh, supplier diversity people and these contracting officers, when they say, do you have any past performance? I can say, yes. <laughs> you know, How I can did always... you feel when you got that contract? It, it, it felt like, you know, some pressure was <laughs> off because, you know, you, until then, it's like, when is it going to happen? When is it going to, you know, when is it going to happen? And then it finally happens. And then it's like, okay, now <laughs> how do I leverage this? Right. Yes. How do I how do I use this to my advantage? Because now I do have some past performance. And when they ask the question, you know, I, I don't have to dance around the, the answer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can say, well, you know, back in 2001, I was doing <laughs> aviation logistics and they're like, OK, well, it's <laughs> yeah, 18, you- <laughs> 19. It's like you know, what's going on? So now we could say that and then I could start saying, well, yeah, it's working with the company. We have a contract. We have a subcontract for a medical supply company in Georgia and we're managing their LTL freight. 
and, uh, deliveries uh, to multiple VA facilities throughout the uh, United States. And so that started opening up conversations. Okay. So it, it didn't lead to, you know, but the, the bad thing about that, as soon as we got that, COVID hit. <laughs> You're like, no, <laughs> like, so, I just got this one. And so, yeah, we, we got it, which it, it kind of worked out good for for me, but and bad at the same time, because, you know, the VA still was steady. They stayed open and the company, they, they did like uh, syringes and stuff. So they were, they, they, their business went way up during COVID. You know, they were shipping stuff. So if their business went up, wouldn't you have more shipments to do though? Yeah. So it was in which it was good for us. Yeah. So what was the bad part? Everything else shut down. All the other agencies, you know, everybody Uh, had to go home. So your marketing had to like you were just doing just that one. Right. You know, and I was, you know, had some other in-person conferences and things like that lined up and then everybody had to go inside and we had to <laughs> wait until they figured out how to start doing stuff virtually and and like and all of this and you know so that kind of threw a little bit of a, a wrench in things where you know we it's like okay I'm, I'm about to take off and then you know this comes in into play and it's like, okay, what do I do now? And then it was like back to, um, had to figure out a way to pivot at that point. Okay. So what was your next drawing board? So I, I got back and started, you know, looking at the opportunities that were coming mm-hmm. out. The ones that, you know, some of the, you know, some of the contracting officers were still working. Mm-hmm. Um, the VA was still uh, issuing out stuff. And so I started looking at things that the VA was, was purchasing, you know, I, course they were purchasing all the PPE stuff you know which the PPE I, I, I held off on the PPE oh, market good for thing a while you didn't. yeah I, oh. I, I, I kind of stayed away from it because it was just it was just a frenzy yes oh uh, you know I started I started looking at you know uh, like the janitorial work and I think I, I eventually settled in on working with somebody for document shredding i teamed up with a lady to start going after document shredding okay contracts we know we did bid on some janitorial work i was working with leilani them Mm -hmm. on that one and uh i think karen okay i think the janitorial yeah so so leilani was on our podcast and she is part of our um of our community and so is Karen. Karen does janitorial and mm-hmm. she's also part of GovCon. So that is for people that don't know, that is how they got connected was through the community. Yeah. So you know we were we were starting to go after you know the, the janitorial work and we bid quite a few of them but you know we never got any answers on them. <laughs> and so you know we you know how that 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 whole process goes. Uh, Yes, you know. it's, it's like you get so excited because you find someone to do it with. And then right. you, you get it out there, you're excited, then you're anxious because you're waiting, and then you get the no. And then you get the other no. And so it's very, for people that haven't been there, it's heartbreaking in a way. Right. It's like you have to stop yourself. And, and that's what I was going to ask you next. How do you keep going? You try the construction, they it didn't work out. Then you started logistics, learning something new. Then you got this one contract months later, and now you're trying this janitorial things, and you keep getting the nose and those and those. Like, what kept you going? Just knowing that you know, I, I, I wanted to create something, I wanted to create my own company and, and build something on my own. Okay, and so it's like, okay, we, we didn't get any nose from the, the, the janitorial we just didn't get any answers oh like, that's even did. worse <laughs> yeah that's the worst worse part, than a no yeah, like, you know, at least know. i know it's a no right yeah i, I could deal with a no <laughs> <laughs> you know because I, I i i could learn from okay where, where my pricing was at you mm-hmm. know see where you know we can kind of tweak some things for the next one but you know these ones it was just like we we, we put together the proposals and the pricing and <laughs> we submitted it then there's no answer 
So, you know, we, we did that, did that, did that. And then, uh, you know, I'm always downloading the new opportunities that come okay. out, of RFIs and things like that on, on you know, I think it was Beta Sam then, uh, trying to learn that system. And, you know, I kept seeing document shredding, shredding, shredding services, media destruction. Huh. You know, I was just like, okay, this is a sign. So let me start <laughs> seeing, <laughs> let me see who's out here that I can team up with and partner with on um, somebody, you know, does these document shredding stuff and up uh, connecting with a lady up in Pennsylvania that had some document shredding uh, contracts with the VA. And, you know, we talked and exchanged some emails and we came up with a teaming arrangement. And, um, you know, we did the same thing. We bid a few. Some we got answers back on, some we, you know, we didn't know. Um, the ones we didn't get, you know, they told us our pricing was okay. a bit high. Um, so like you said, now you're learning from what you have to tweak. Well, right. the lady in Pennsylvania, she actually does the shredding of the documents. Yes. Okay, so she provides the service. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so, you know, we um, teamed up together and the, the first one we won um, with her was one that she was already performing on. It's for, uh, <laughs> you know, she had it as a small business set aside. They re-released it as a service disabled better known small business oh, set aside. And so. <laughs> that's the need now. And so I had the certification and, you know, then we rebid it. She was already so, doing it. Yeah. yeah. She was already doing it. So we just. So you know, you, we did it. We rebid it like that, and you know, we was able to win that one. Was that your first prime contract? That was the first. That was the first prime one. Now, how did you feel about that one? Now that contract's yours, so that yeah. must be a very good feeling. Yeah, that was that was very that, yeah that that was way more rewarding than the subcontracted one because then it was I was able to see the whole process. <laughs> all the way through you know <laughs> yeah. and that's what a lot of people forget or choose not to know um is that you just don't put a bid out there and then you get a contract and voila things are beautiful yeah. unicorns roses and all that like what comes after it is another it's a bigger process actually yeah, because you yeah. have the paperwork you have the start dates you have this you have that like it's a lot of stuff that goes into it even right. if she was already doing it but now you as the prime are responsible for all these other things right and that one got protested <laughs> no <laughs> yeah oh. we yeah, I had to, I had to, so I'm, I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm like so deep in lawyer fees right now, <laughs> trying to keep it, but you know, we, it's looking like we're going to keep it, but. When yeah, did you it, win this one? Uh, I won that one, I want to say March of this year. Okay, it's recent. Yeah, that was recent. Actually, actually my first prime one was for nitrile gloves. I had won it probably a few weeks before that one it was uh for uh nitrile gloves for the uh what's that down there in florida vision nine or vision eight uh for tampa on down to miami and puerto rico all those those facilities uh with a va yes it was for like it was a bpa for what like 137,000 boxes Oh wow! Um, okay. Yeah, still waiting on the still waiting on a delivery order, but but you, you won know. a contract. Yeah, that was and that one was like one point seven million. Oh, that was. So I'm waiting on I'm waiting on the, I'm waiting on the task orders, and you know I just drop a little line in with them every now and then to say hey, but <laughs> I'm still here, you know. But yeah, that one that was like the first one, but at the same time. <laughs> they didn't they didn't they didn't they haven't issued me any you know any task orders any task orders or, or delivery orders especially also. in florida florida we need we need all everything we can get because things are not i just read somewhere that our numbers are higher now than it when it was for the outbreak so you mm -hmm. might get a task order anytime soon i'm hoping i'm, I'm hoping <laughs> so 
Because that's that's probably the one that I, I I haven't had a chance to do anything on uh, outside of this document shredding one because some people protested it and you know neither one of those companies were anywhere <laughs> in the vicinity of, of the the facility. Either. So for people that don't understand the pro protest process, so they issue you an award and then mm. what what happens next when they're protesting um, so you know the contract officer they issue the award mm -hmm. you, know, you sign all the paperwork and, and all of that stuff and they you know give you a start date okay well you know the contract officer on this one was very upfront he was like don't be surprised if you receive a protest um notification award letter a protest letter because it's very common with the document shredding contracts, which oh. was a surprise to me. I was like, really? You know, like people want to come in and shred documents <laughs> that bad? But uh, he's like, don't be surprised if you receive an, uh, a, a protest, protest on this one. And sure enough, you know, probably two, maybe three weeks later, I get a email from the... Uh, uh, SBA <laughs> with the protest notice in it and they you know they they were protesting my uh my award by my status as a service disabled vet and you know so we put together a response and submitted uh the, the CVE letter and all of that but what they did was they coupled the subcontracting rule protest into one but it's supposed to be two separate protests so they they were protesting my status as a service disabled veteran on company and they were then they they tried to loop in the ostensible subcontractor rule protest in the one but you know the guidelines in the far say they have to be two separate protests and that's where good lawyers come into play. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to ask, how did you find all this out? Good lawyers. Yes. <laughs> oh. Really good go government contract lawyers. You got to get lawyers that, that understand specialize that. government contracting. And I got, a co I got a firm out of Huntsville, Alabama that I work with. Okay. Wow. <laughs> So have you, you guys haven't started this one. It's still. Um, it's still ongoing under my teaming partner because she's still the incumbent. So they've been issuing her, you know, like one month extensions mm. until all of this gets resolved, which has been, <laughs> I mean, we've been going through this process since March. <laughs> April, May, June, July, August. Yeah. Five months. Yeah, yes, yes. Just because <laughs> another company wants to throw a tantrum, basically. Basically. <laughs> and out of all things, like you're protesting the fact that I am a service to see a veteran. Like, really? All right. And they were, they were really, what they wanted to protest was the ostensible rule, subcontractor rule, because, the, you know, the contract was up in, the contract is up in uh, Fargo, was it North Dakota, South Dakota. It's, it's up there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, you know, they were, so, they were protesting that, but, you know, we had our teaming agreements and everything already in place that we had already submitted to this oh, you know, the okay. contracting officer. And when they made the decision against us, I said, well, no, I'm filing a reconsideration, you know, because my my um my lawyers looked at the decision letter and like well that's not right you know they can't make a decision based on the ostensible rule <laughs> uh, clause because that wasn't the protest the protest was for, your status yeah my status so and that easily is proven like you own the company and you have your duty to and for and all your paperwork so yeah. Oh, wow. So what now? Like now that you have, so you've had these contracts, you had the one as a sub that actually you did perform. Um, mm -hmm. And then after that one, you had the nitro gloves, which is the million dollar one, which is, ve sounds very, very nice. Right. But they had, 
people think it's like, oh, I get this contract. It's like, no, you have to wait for orders to be issued for the right. contract. So people need to understand that it's not just all like, here you go and here's yeah. all your money. The <laughs> government is the government at the end of the day and they have their ways of being slow sometimes of issuing yeah. things just in case and, exactly. and it's like hurry up and wait kind of thing yeah, and especially with the they, VA oh, okay and the VA, especially with the VA and correct. now you have the shredding one which is getting processed mm -hmm. have you gotten any others um we did some other ones with the VA uh been doing some uh got some contract wins for lab and refrigeration equipment Okay. Um, yeah, because uh, you know, my I got suppliers that you know have all that stuff. Yeah, what That's you originally supplier. set out to do, basically, yeah. get supply them with supply with products. Yeah. yeah. So you know, we've been more more for pill crushers, the tablet splitters. Uh huh. Uh, I've got a couple for that. Couple for lab refrigerators. Uh, for some VAs out in California. Uh did some uh the covid covid uh vaccine coolers okay uh, and the and thermometers and and things like that uh got a contract for that uh one for some syringes but see you told me all these sad stories of the protests and then covid hit and <laughs> I, I have a, a idea a thing with no task orders but you forgot all the good parts they mm -hmm. might be small compared to these oh, no. but but no. they're still oh, those, they're those still, still a contract good, those are still good wins you know yeah, like, yeah those I, are very good ones yeah those are still good wins no i you know you got to keep the good stuff for last because oh, <laughs> oh. then you're like i asked you i'm like have you kind of you're like yeah this one and this one and this one and this i'm like wait yeah <laughs> i actually did some uh just just finished up on uh one with the Marines provided them with some porta potties and hand washing stations for tra uh, for a training exercise. I've seen those come out actually. You yeah, know, it's like yeah, it, those are coming out a lot lately. Um, I'm probably not going to do those anymore. Uh, it's just a it's, it's a it's a little bit of a headache to kind of get, get them serviced and, and, and then, then, when they're dropping them off. And yeah, they, then you know and then. You know, working with some good companies, but you know the people on site. When you're not there, you know they telling the the drivers. You know mm. they asking them to do extra stuff, and then you get an invoice like, "What is this?" And they're like, "Well, you know, this guy told the driver to come back out there on this date," and it's like, "Okay, well, I'm not I'm not eating this cost. I'm getting on that." <laughs> hey, contracting officer. Your guy over there, he told the driver to come back out and service it. Uh, here's an invoice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, because you know, hey, I'm not eating that cost. <laughs> okay, you're being smart though. You're not just like, oh, but I want to be nice about it. I'm like, no, if it's not in my contract and you have no authority over it, then you shouldn't be doing this. Right. And then, you know, I had to go back and clear it up with the, the drivers like, don't don't do any extra work without it being prior authorized. Mm -hmm. Okay. Know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, You're using like, your yeah. business management um, skills here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Because, you know, like, it's, I mean, those, that, those, those are cool, but uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to go after okay. any, any more of those. Uh, not, at least not at the moment. I'm working with some other companies that's reached out to me that do uh, industrial tents and things like that. You know, they work with the uh, uh, Bureau of Land Management and USDA. They set up um, the little substations or whatever for when they have forest fires and national disasters and things like that. So we, we, we're kind of, if, if I do go down that path again, <laughs> I'm going to let them be like the, the, the main management of it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you know. And that's what, it, it's very important that you find a good company to be your subs, to be your providers, yeah. your suppliers, just because if they know their business, let them handle what they need to know. Yeah. 
it's it's hard and it's hard because you want to get involved but at the same time it's like i like you know you know what you're doing like i just right. told you to do certain things so things like that so if you had a few have you totaled them all up i've done numbers in the in my head how many uh, do you think you've won this is about seven so far this year this year this year seven and we are in month eight. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I, 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 now I don't want to think about how many I bid on. <laughs> because, you know, with the VA, you know, and you put the medical supplies and lab equipment, you know, they come out and, you know, you just, you know, you get a quote from the supplier, fill out the RFQ, submit it. And then, you know, you kind of just move on to the next one, you know. Wait, yes. You know. <laughs> yes. And people are like, I'm like, you have to let it go and not think about it. Because then, because yeah. I did it the first few times around, you think about it and you think about it and you yeah. think about it. And it's just, it's going to drive you bananas. Yeah. It, it, it'll, <laughs> it'll run your anxiety you know, <laughs> through the roof, yes. you know, like uh, just waiting and waiting mm -hmm. for when are they going to answer? When are they going to answer? Mm -hmm. And then just like, you know what, let me go find something else to take my, you know, and that's the best way. I, that's my best advice. Go find something else to take your mind off of it because, I mean, the, it, it, they, they have to wait for so many people to approve mm -hmm. that the final award, you know, is probably sitting on somebody's desk and they're waiting on funding or they're waiting on, you know, whatever the case may be. So I just, you know, go ahead and get back and look for other opportunities if there's okay. no opportunities out there you know i start going back to step one with my market research and okay you know reaching back out to contracting officers and small business specialists and just retracing steps and trying to keep lines of communication open uh, i have a couple of good con contacts with some of the prime uh, contractors with uh, like northrop grumman and uh, Boeing and, and, you know, trying to get in the door with them. So uh, trying to nurture those relationships, dropping an email or a phone call or a text, any little thing that just try to keep moving the, the needle forward instead of just dwelling on when is this, when is this, <laughs> you know, when is this decision going to come down? Mm -hmm. Is they going to give me the contract or they not? You know, because sometimes they award fast and sometimes you just it, don't know what it's happened. Just a, it's just a long drawn out process. Yes. So, and so you're sticking to the logistics part of it? Uh, yes. Uh, you know, just trying to find ways to just marry to services and, and service offerings that, that are somewhat synergistic, you know, because I, I, I primarily focus on doing work with the VA. Okay. And so whenever I reach out to uh, a, a company that is a supplier or somebody that's a, another service provider, mm -hmm. uh, I try to make sure it's something that fits what the VA is buying. Okay. You know, that way I can, you know, because right now that's the way I'm, you know, pretty much maximizing and leveraging the, the certification because the VA, you know, they got to, you know, they, they got to spend so much money with, you know. Yes the veteran owned businesses and service disabled businesses and, and so trying to just try to maximize that certification with them and and keep building up that past performance and doing good work and, and building those relationships with those uh contracting officers and trying to just and in in the larger companies you know they they, they look to work with some of the smaller ones that mm -hmm. can get keep them in the door so to say okay um, so you're going to take that approach now like you yeah. use yourself as a small business now yes yes you know and um, i work with some 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 large liquefied gas manufacturers uh because you know the va buys bulk oxygen and yes it, 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 and helium and co2 and nitrogen and all these different lab gases and mm -hmm. things like that so that's been a uh, my, my next sort of evolution of trying to support and get work from the VA is, you know, we've been working on putting together bids 
uh, for those those bulk oxygen and bulk mm -hmm. gas products uh, and dry ice, you know, because if they're making those, you know, dry ice is like a byproduct of... Oh, <laughs> oh see? I would have never guessed. I think yeah. with dry ice to, like, transport food or yeah. or stages <laughs> to make yeah. the but, you know, they, they, they use it in their labs and things like that, you know, they, and I know they use it to keep the COVID vaccines um, mm. at, a, at, a, at the temperature that they need to be at. And so we've been going after that type of work uh, through them. You've been busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's fun, you know, I, it's, it's kind of enjoyable to me. So I don't, Oh. I don't, I don't okay. mind it. You know, I like being busy. You, you don't know. let it give you anxiety. You actually see it as a challenge, like a yeah. game, basically. Like, yeah, you know, and that, and that, you know, that kind of leads back to why I joined the Marines. You know, I could have joined any other brand. My mom uh -huh. joined the Air Force and, you know, I was like, you know what? I want a challenge. So, you know, everything has always been a challenge, you know, a double major, <laughs> and, you know, because of the challenge, you know, it was, I could have just. Government contracting know, because of a challenge. Yeah, it's a challenge. Oh, brokering, you know? it's a challenge. Yeah, it's the challenge, you know, it's the challenge that makes it rewarding. You know, the money is good too, but the challenge, you know, the, the, the satisfaction you get from saying that I did that, uh, to me, you know, that is much more rewarding. Are you still working full time? No, no, I, I left the job back in October of last year. So government um, contracting is your yeah. This is all I'm all in. Um, okay. You know, it was it was getting to the point where I was I was losing opportunities because I was trying to juggle, you know, mm -hmm. doing this full time and uh working and you know when you're trying to put together proposals and and things like this and you get your your due dates crossed up and Oof. you know you spent all this time and energy and then you you come back you think on your off day like okay I got time to finish this up and put this together and you're like oh it was due two days ago <laughs> that sounds like something that actually happened, not a what if situation. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, and it was and it was really getting to the point where oh. I just couldn't juggle doing both. Like okay, so Fido Logistics is your now hundred percent. You're all in, like in the drawing board all the time. Now you're yeah. back to the marketing, and your next yeah. challenge is up in the air right now in your brain, getting ready to go. Well, the next challenge right now, I'm actually working on um, developing an uh, e-commerce website uh, with all of my suppliers. Oh, that's and true, because so, now you have all these different supplies. And there's a lot of it's, what, medical then? It, you know, you got most, you got medical suppliers, uh, PPE suppliers. Yeah, because uh, you, you have the, the syringes, the, the pill crushers and all that so yeah you know you get the suppliers with the gases and mm -hmm. all of that so now i'm working with my web developer and you know we're uh we're working on integrating everything into my own uh website um to st start making it easier for the, the contracting officers to purchase you know they have some different vehicles that they're using uh, right now, um, the uh, the Minority Supplier Diversity Council, uh -huh. uh, they came to me with this program uh, with the uh, EPS, which is like a procurement system that the Air Force is kind of uh, trialing right now. And so my website is kind of piggybacking on what they're doing just in case that doesn't work out. <laughs> okay. You know, but they're... Yeah, they have some program, electronic uh, procurement system uh, website that they're trialing with uh, the Air Force and uh, corporate buyers and things like that. Yeah, so they can do the corporate spend with MBEs and you know, your women-owned businesses mm -hmm. and women minority businesses and service-disabled veteran-owned businesses. So, you know, it's kind of trying to make it a way for 
those corporate buyers in. The, I think it's supposed to be some other branches of the military joining on board with mm-hmm. it too. They, they ended up taking the contract away from Amazon because uh, I know, I don't know if, I think we had posted in the group on Facebook a couple of times, Amazon was uh, trialing this government sales di- um, directed mm-hmm. portal uh, with them, but the go- the Amazon, from what I, what they told me, the Amazon one uh, failed horribly, oh. and so they were the ones to pick up and get that contract from the Air Force, and they've been so far they've been having success with it. So, yeah, I've been I'm working with both of them uh, to try to market those products and, and support the services. Um, to to not only the government but also uh, the civilian side because like right now you know like I get approached by so many vendors looking for trying to sell their stuff <laughs> it's like man I, I don't have an outlet for you right <laughs> now man like the government is kind of not spending money on this stuff right now not not through the open market mm-hmm. you know so I got to kind of find ways to make it easier for them to buy. Yeah. Them. <laughs> so. yeah. And like you said, if you put it all in one place, at least they know exactly what you could offer. Right. And, you know, and we try to make it, you know, safe, you know, with all the cybersecurity um, stuff that's going on with the requirements. And, you know, we, you know, we got to have the, the, the systems in place that, they can actually use the government uh, credit cards to make mm. uh, purchases, and so that's that's really right now the the next that's the next phase that I'm working on uh, right now before the next next phase. <laughs> <laughs> the next next phase. Yeah. Oh wow, that's awesome! And what do you? F- now that you're working towards that you're building you're on your own like do you feel like you've learned enough to get you going like what has been your biggest take from it all in this last Um, year and a half really where you've gotten all these contracts um, and you started doing it it's it's, my biggest take is that it's still so much to learn you know because you you know you you think you're kind of figuring it out and then you get in the room with some people that are a little more experienced with than you are. And, you know, they kind of drop tidbits on you and you're like, oh man, I never thought about that. Um, that's, that's, that's always been my recommendation to people, you know, try to get in rooms, uh, in these events and expos and get around people that's doing uh, government contracting. They'll, they'll usually drop some type of knowledge on you that can help you, you know, it, I'm not going to say it's going to get you a contract award win, but it kind of helps get you, you know, that much closer uh, okay. because this, 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 this is a big, it's a big industry <laughs> not to learn. So, um, I got books. Uh, hold on. That's what I was going to ask, like any <laughs> recommendations other than get out there. I mean, I got books everywhere. <laughs> All right, I got What's this one? I don't know. Can you see that Becoming one? Becoming a GovCon expert. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, that was one of uh, Eric's podcast guests, uh, Emily Harmon. Oh, okay. I don't know if you, and, and Eric Wright. Doc Wright is on, uh, wrote this one too. Mm. Um, oh, I got another couple of books over here. I mean, look, <laughs> look at all these books, man. It's like, oh. these are all government contracting books. I mean, oh, it's, wow. <laughs> so, so you do to, <laughs> These are all government for contracts. those that are listening there's about ugh, 10 12 maybe 14 books in his hands right now <laughs> yeah man <it's, laughs> i mean this is all it's those long. books plus the course and you are one that shows up every tuesday no yeah. matter where you are in the process like showing up has always been one of your things because i like I, we started at the same time and Actually, Eric just told me, it's like, what's you put in it? Look who shows up every Tuesday. And that is how we're, we're measuring. Like, yeah, we see that you are being successful at this, but what did it take to get there? Like, it took you, look at all those books. 
It took you right. showing up on Tuesday. It took you working overnights and doing this in the in the daytime. Like you mm -hmm. spent your days off. What were you doing? You were learning something else. Right. So it's not just like ta da! I did it. It's no. not that you one day you you were working at Mercedes and you're like I'm gonna do government contracting and no. you got a contract. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't. It, I wish it did happen like that. <laughs> But uh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't work like that. I mean, it, yeah, it, 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 you you have to put in the work. I mean, that's and uh, that's and withstand the nose and not even the nose, the unknowns of did mm -hmm. I do it? Did I turn something good in? Did I not? Um, it took you networking with a different industries you started with the tr with construction and logistics mm -hmm. and then you tried this and that like it took a lot of stuff so right. like all my respects to you because I especially when you're working that those night shifts and those rotating shifts and all that like it takes dedication mm -hmm. and now you're starting to see though the right. harvest of it all like right right and so, then, you know you know Another one of my suggestions, you know, try to try to narrow down a niche. I know it's, it's hard, but, you know, just don't overthink it. Some people overthink how can they break in. And I'm like, man, chances are you you got experience doing something that either a, a federal person is looking for, a prime contractor, somebody it, it will purchase those services because they have their their small business goals that they have to meet, and you know the uh, you know President Biden and his administration has mandated that they increase you know spending with small businesses. So you know, and and uh, there are some advocacy groups out there saying they want more transparency on the higher growth services instead of you know just giving small businesses, you know, janitorial work where the profit margins is razor thin, you know, they're like, hey, mm. you know, they, they, there's some advocacy groups out there pushing for the primes and everybody to be more transparent with how they're awarding small business contracts, especially with the, the high profit margin uh, services and, and things like that. So um, yeah, find out a niche and you know, chances are they are buying, you know, something that you know how to do. On top of the fact that you've read all those books, took the course, show up on Tuesdays, you're still on top of the news and the current events that are going on on government contracting. <laughs> so, you kind of have to immerse yourself in this. I yeah. mean, this is a, this is a sub you could do part time. Like, like you said, you're all in and you're all in and every single angle of it from your marketing to the contracts to knowing what's going on to even like you said, the website, you're piggybacking off them, like knowing what is coming along. Mm -hmm. You are preparing for the future, too. Right. You know, and, and I think that's something that you kind of you, you kind of have to develop that skill of kind of seeing what the direction that things could possibly go. You don't ever want to be in a reactive state. You know, that's just always been my experience, you know, from being a supervisor, everything else. You don't want to be on the reactive end of anything. You, you know, if you are on the reactive end, you don't want to be so far behind <laughs> with the reaction that you know it's a possibility you 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 just won't be able to catch up and recover mm. you know you you at least want to be able to to adapt when you do react and, and be able to keep moving mm. and you know that that you know goes like you said you know just staying in the loop linkedin has been a great help with staying on top of things uh I follow all of the small business offices for all of the, 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 the departments. Uh, I don't care if it's the department, DOD, DHS, all of them. I, support, I follow all of the small business offices that I can because, you know, they, they typically post updates and news articles and webinars and, and people you should know. 
And, you know, that's just a, a, a little strategy for staying on top of, you know, what's going on because it's the landscape changes. It, it, the, 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 the procurement cycle mm -hmm. takes forever. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, the landscape, things change all the time. And it's uh, kind of easy to fall back uh, fall behind on what's going on uh, in this federal marketplace. Oh, wow. You are, you've grown so much. And being that this is, and I've seen you throughout these last few years, but like right now sitting down and talking to you, you are a wealth of knowledge. Like I said, I admire your grit and your perseverance in this. And I wish you lots and lots of more success stories that come out of it because you like you said you're fully immersed in this so any final words or how do people get in contact with you if they're looking for anything from to mentor for a mentor to a network to anything else that you want to just share with the world right now they can hit me up on linkedin yeah you know linkedin i, I i'm always on linkedin <laughs> You know, I kind of, you know, fell in love with being on LinkedIn a lot more. Than, if it wasn't for Facebook videos, I wouldn't be on Facebook hardly at all. Uh, that's my entertainment. Okay. <laughs> that's a good thing, to, the way to see it. Yeah, LinkedIn was is, has been really good to me, too. Like, yes. LinkedIn finding is awesome. people and networking with people that you don't know who's, who's out there. Yes. I mean, you can, you, can, you can really get in touch with just about anybody on LinkedIn um so yes they can they can reach me on linkedin uh they can email me you know demetrius.walker at phytologistics.com um those are my my two okay contact methods any words of advice or words of wisdom to to the people that are trying to get in it right now like what advice you wish you had be given when you had that moment of, I want to get into government contracting. Find a niche and stick with it. <laughs> Simple. Simple. Simple uh, and if, if I had a did, if I had a stuck with Eric's advice of focusing on logistics oh. like in 2017, I could have saved myself a lot of time, a lot of effort and energy. <laughs> I could have been, you know, instead of seven contract wins, I could probably have 70. Yeah, <laughs> you could have had pre-COVID and post-COVID. Exactly, right? exactly. So, um, um, yeah, find a niche, uh, focus on that niche, do your market research and uh, check, you know, that that's the, that's the best advice awesome. I can give and try not to get discouraged, you know, uh, see it through. You, you you know even if it's not the results that you want you know you're still learning yes. you know it's all about this is a uh this is an ever ever evolving learning experience what you did for the win the last contract might not work to win the <laughs> next one you know <laughs> so yeah continue learning find a niche uh don't be discouraged you know, yeah. don't, don't fall for bad advice. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's really awesome. And I want to thank you again for spending this time with us, for showing up every time. And whenever we need you, you are there and for supporting us also in every single way. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, no. Thank you all, man. I appreciate the opportunity. <laughs> You know, I kind of like to stay in the shadows, but yeah, and I appreciate it. No, and that's why we do this because we want, there's a lot of us that want to stay in the shadows, but even till this day, I know I've been gone for a little bit, even to this day, seeing the emails that people send me. And for me, I'm like, I didn't do big things like some of you guys are doing, but <laughs> stories like you, maybe someone resonates with you, resonate with who you are, the fact that you were a Marine, maybe that you had, we were from a small town with that you grew up with pigs and things like that. <laughs> One stoplight, we're two high schools, things like that. You never know what people are going to see and they're like yes and that's what they're going to take maybe words that you've said motivated them to keep at it to mm -hmm. stick with it and every story that we share for me is very personal because we don't know who we're connecting mm -hmm. who we're touching and who we're motivating to keep going and 
like Eric says, three feet from gold. Maybe you're oh, you're right there, but you need to do that right. little extra push. So right. I appreciate every single one of these. <laughs> oh, yes, yes definitely. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Demetrius.